a lot of projects on this channel and other smart home channels require some kind of MCU or a board to power it. We all know about the ESP32s, the small ESP32 boards, we also know about the ESP D1 minis or 8266 boards. But some time ago, Seed Studio has released SHA ESP32 C3 board. Around December of 2022, this board has been officially added to ESP Home. And today we will be playing with this board here, but also the latest sensor from the Seed Studio, the present sensor. We'll start in a couple of seconds. If we compare this $5 board with other options we have for DIY projects, and some of my favorites are ESP32 and ESP8266s in a small D1 Mini package, we can see that there is a lot of difference in size. And size doesn't matter always, because this little ESP32 C3 board is packing a lot of punches. I will be of course leaving a link to this board, the sensor we'll be using today, but also all the other links that you need to finish up this project. While we are talking about the Seed Studio, they are really known for their excellent documentation. And most of the things that we will be doing here today, you can also find in the links on the pages I will be providing. But let's spend a couple of moments talking about this little board. Xiao, which I think in Chinese means small or tiny. ESP32 C3 board is new RISC architecture style of the board. It supports both Wi-Fi and BLE, but unfortunately at the time of the recording of this video, BLE functionality is still not supported with the ESP Home. We will not be needing it, but just in case if you are considering to use this board as a Bluetooth proxy. And I really do hope that we will see Bluetooth support added in near future because this board is even smaller than some of the other proxies I've been using, and those are M5 stack Atom lights. The board does arrive with the external antenna, which is a pretty big one, but if you are thinking of printing a case and putting your project inside the case, then you also have the alternative, and the alternative is this external antenna. There are some other flavors to the board, don't mix them up, because we need this ESP32 C3. Other boards may not be compatible with the projects that you want to do or with the ESP Home itself. But there is also kit for this Seed Shao board, which includes some of the sensors and things that you can start playing with, which I really do recommend that you try out, of course, if you can. Seed Studio has, as I mentioned previously, great documentation. You have a lot of applications or examples or samples that you can look at, get inspired or start working with. For example, this one here, Smart Private Garage, which is using two of those boards to control your garage doors. Or this one here, Remote Forest Tracker, that can be used as a tracker for your pet, dog. This board is using Type-C connector. We have LED that will light up if it's charging or if it receives power. We have boot button, reset button and, as I mentioned, the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antenna connector. And the second component we will be using today is this 24 GHz microwave sensor component, human static presence module, light. There are different types of the sensors. This one, which costs only $7 or a little bit under $7, is this human static presence light. We have also this stationary sensor, a respiratory or sleep sensor, a respiratory or heartbeat sensor, and fall detection pro sensor. Most of them cost double, triple, or even quadruple from what this static presence sensor light costs. And as you will see later on, it really does refresh a lot and give you a lot of information that you can then use in, for example, Home Assistant. Some of the information in regard to that board. This board runs on 5 volts, but it can run in the range between 4.5 up to 6 volts. Operating current typical is 110 milliamps, but it can also pull all the way down from 95 up to 120 milliamps. Operating I.O. current is from 8 to 20 milliamps. 
and the size itself is not that big, 35 by 30 millimeters. Those 9 millimeters are the pins that are pre-soldered on the board. Maximum detection distance is from 3.5 meters for detecting objects or people in sleep, 4 meters for stationary objects and 5 meters for motion detection range. This is the maximum values. And angles are 90 degrees horizontal and 60 degrees vertical or pitch. And now let's look at this guide here. Shaw ESP32 C3 Access Home Assistant via ESP Home Service. In order for us to finish this project, you will be needing ESP32 C3 board, you will need this millimeter wave sensor board, and also four Dupont cables, plus one USB C connector that will be used to power the board and also program it for the first time. Documentation for this project that is available on the link down in the video description will guide you through the whole of the installation process. It does presume that you already have Home Assistant running, but even if you do not have Home Assistant installed, here you will find links to install it on the Odyssey X86 machine, re-terminal or re-router or Linkstar router. And now comes the fun part. You have to hook up this board. First Dupont cable needs to go from 5 volt pin on the ESP board to the 5 volt pin on the sensor board. Next we need to connect the ground wire from the ESP board, which is one pin below the 5 volts, to the pin for the ground that is next to the 5 volts in the first row on the sensor board. Next we need to connect D6 connector with the RX or receive on the board and D7 connector on the ESP board to the TX on the sensor board. And that's it. Four wires are all we need to hook everything up. This project is using additional header file. And because of that, you either need to go to the terminal and run this terminal inside your Home Assistant instance, or for example, how I did it, is to use either file editor or VS Code to copy that file to Home Assistant. We will just copy this link here, https up to .h, and paste and open the URL in the new window. Then just right click or press Ctrl A on Windows machine, copy everything, and inside VS Code or file editor, whatever editor you are using to edit YAML files, go to ESP Home folder and there create a new file. Name the new file R, capital R, 24 DVD in lowercase, dot H, and just paste the code there. That's it. We have now prepared .h or header file for the next step. The next step is same for this board as with any new board that you are using in your ESP Home. Click on add new device, type in device name, for example ESP32C3, click on next. If you are running your Home Assistant with the HTTPS certificate, you will be presented with a screen like this. But if you are running your Home Assistant without the HTTP certificate or in unsecure form, you will see screen like this. In this case, click on Open ESP Home Web. Click on Connect. Select USB JTAG Serial Debug Unit. Click on Connect. And prepare for first use. But as I mentioned, I am using the certificate and I have secure connection, so I'll be doing it the other way around. I will click Connect, select USB JTAG Serial Debug Unit, Connect, and if you receive this error, you can press and hold the Boot button and repeat the same process. Depending on the speed of your system, it can take from a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes. And if everything is correct, that should be it. In the next step, we have to change parts of the YAML file. Click on Edit. We will have to replace this upper part, which is called Part 1 in documentation, and this lower part, which is this captive portal line here. And in documentation, it is referenced as both Part 2 and Part 3. 
this upper part, which starts at the beginning of the document and finishes with the logger, we have to click on this link here, and that will open the GitHub repository where you need to copy this code and replace the first part of the code. You can delete this here and give this device either same name, ESP32C3 in my case, or whatever name you want to name this device. We see that this is underlined because, yeah, it will not work with the captive portal. Delete it, go back to the documentation, click on this second link, and we will copy this second part of the code. Click on raw, select everything, copy, and paste it inside the ESP home. That's it. Everything is now ready. If you have followed this step by step, connected those four DuPont cables, connected everything up and changed the code according to what I've shown you here or the documentation, you are good to go. Click on save and click on install. Next step depends on your setup. You can either use wirelessly because OTA update will already work or if you're using USB cable and have HTTPS certificate for secure connection, you can use this plugin to computer. I will be using wirelessly. This process will take again some time, but that should be the last step. Actually, the last step is to add everything to Home Assistant. And voila, it's finished. If everything is correct, you should see something similar to this here and the board has started sending the data. We now have everything working and we can use it as a sleep sensor or sensor that you put under or above your desk to see if you are working or not. There are tons of ways on how you can use this sensor data, but we still haven't got that data inside Home Assistant. For us to be able to do that, let's do a couple of more steps. I'll copy the encryption key, don't worry, this key will be changed by the time the video is released and also if it's not changed, good luck on trying to find my network and connecting to it. Let's check notifications to see if the system has discovered this device or not. Yes, it has been discovered, but if for example the system wouldn't discover it, you would just need to go to the add integration, type in ESP Home, click on it and set another instance of ESP Home. In my case, I will just press configure. Submit. Select area. Finish. And that's it. We should now see device here. If we click on it, we have one device with 35 entities. You can disable, enable the device, and you can play with the settings. And there are really a lot of settings from sensitivity to timers or timeouts, etc. If some of the data is not visible, for example, standard firmware version, hardware model, etc., don't worry. Unfortunately, it doesn't work also for me. There are a couple of sensors that you should look carefully at. For example, this one here. This is the standard heartbeat sensor. If everything is working correctly, you should see it or it should always be in the normal state. If, for example, the sensor loses connection because the wire has disconnected, you will get abnormal state here. Here we have information about the motion distance. Yes, you do not have centimeters here, but it does round nicely to half a meter, meter, etc. Motion speed will tell you how fast is the object moving, either in a positive value when something is moving towards the sensor or negative value if something is moving away from the sensor. But before I leave you to play with the sensor data, look at this number here. If I stand still, it drops to 1. As soon as I start talking or breathing, it jumps to 6. So the sensor is very sensitive for the price, for the size and for the availability. Sure, there are alternatives, but I really do like this sensor and it can be, as I mentioned, easily used as, for example, something that you put inside your bedroom to check if there is occupancy of the bed or not, and if there is a occupancy or if somebody is sleeping in the bed. 
Second thing that I also mentioned on the stream, and yes, last weekend we had members only stream where we played with this sensor and talk about a bunch of other stuff. The recording itself will be available soon. On that stream I mentioned that, for example, I can use it here at this desk to see if I am present at the desk or not. And so if I leave those two lights on and I walk away from the desk, I can have this sensor trigger the lights off if it doesn't detect that there is an occupancy here, even if there is no movement. While Seed Studio did send me free of charge this ESP32 C3 board and this sensor board, they didn't sponsor or pay me to do any kind of a review or anything, but I still do like what they are doing for the Arduino and DIY community. For example, look at this one here. This is the Groove board with the OLED display that has been designed for this ESP32 C3 module. And it's really awesome because it allows you to expand, to learn about Arduino, to learn about coding, to learn on how sensors work, and later use that knowledge for your DIY sensors. I challenge you to be next Lewis and create even better present sensor. So check out the links below. And if you did like this video and do like those boards, don't forget to give me a like. This not just means a lot to me, but it really helps with the messed up YouTube algorithms. And I really want to thank all of you wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by A. Becoming a YouTube channel member for only less than $2 or €2 Euros per month or B, go to my merchandise store and buy something there. We call that merchandise store, not merch, we are adults. And I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.